Hello, and thank you so much for joining us for today's Mobile Cause webinar, Cultivate Donor Loyalty with the Perfect Thank You. I'm Scott Couchman, the training manager here at Mobile Cause, and now it's that time of year when most of you are working hard to bring in new Giving Tuesday and year-end donations. But how do you then retain those new donors and build long-lasting relationships with them? Well, today's webinar is going to help you to share your gratitude with supporters in ways that inspires trust and increases long-term donor retention. We'll take a look at everything from why a well-crafted acknowledgement is key to retaining donors to the five steps nonprofits need to craft a killer thank you letter and even some creative ways to say thank you that will endear your cause to the hearts of donors and inspire more repeat giving. So grab your pen and paper and let's get ready for an enlightening discussion on how you can embrace an attitude of, of gratitude and to create stronger connections for your cause. We welcome your partition, participation today uh, in, in the presentation, so please feel free to ask any questions about donor thank yous by submitting them in the questions box on your GoToWebinar control panel. We'll answer the questions directly to participants during the webinar and also at the end when we have an open Q&A session with our experts. And if you stay with us here live until the end of our webinar, you'll be entered for a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card. So stick around for that. And now we hope you enjoy our webinar. And as a quick reminder, we will be sending out the recording and the slides to all our registrants afterwards. Now, today's webinar is presented by Mobile Cause. Mobile Cause understands the everyday cha challenges that uh, nonprofits face, constantly confronted with limited resources yet still expected to expand your impact. Well, you shouldn't have to face these challenges alone. That's why Mobile Cause offers more than comprehensive fundraising software. We also provide one on one strategy from dedicated fundraising experts that have the um, and have the industry's best support team ready to provide assistance 24-7. At MobileCause, we are just as committed to your cause as you are, and together we can grow your nonprofit like never before. Now, let me introduce you to our presenters, both uh, fundraising experts. First off, Gail Perry is the founder of Gail Perry Associates, a leading national fundraising consulting firm, helping nonprofits raise hundreds of millions of dollars. With over 30 years of experience in successful major gift and capital campaign fundraising, Gail focuses on guiding her clients to transformational gifts that can catapult their organizations to new heights. She is a veteran of over 55 capital campaigns from LA to Maine as a consultant, a coach, or a staffer, raising over $500 million. She is also a coach, blogger, keynote speaker, and the author of Fired Up Fundraising, Turn Board Passion Into Action, and recently named number 10 on Philanthropy Media's list of America's top fundraising experts. Lindsay Himple is a digital marketing specialist with MobileCause, where she works one-on-one -on -one with nonprofits to maximize their fundraising campaign success. She creates and sets up campaigns, provides fundraising and donor engagement strategies, and creates supportive communication and promotional tools. Lindsay's work has enabled hundreds of MobileCause customers to successfully accelerate and increase their fundraising and engagement efforts. Now today we have a really informative session for you, packed with helpful insights and takeaways where our speakers will cover these topics. Why are thank yous vitally important? The five steps to a perfect thank you letter, five creative ways to thank and acknowledge donors, and gratitude strategies to endear donors to your cause. All right, now before we get into our Cultivate Donor Loyalty with the perfect thank you session, we have a quick poll for everyone. So we want to ask, how do you feel about your current donor strategy? So let me open up the poll here. 
And if you want to go ahead and answer that, we have the four, four choices here. Great, we acknowledge and cultivate donors continuously. Fine, we thank donors for the gifts, but no, we should do more. So-so, there's more to thank you strategy than a gift receipt or non-existence. What is a thank you strategy? So if you can choose that, let's see how we're doing here. All right, getting numbers coming in. All right, most of you are voting. A few of you left are here, so go ahead and uh, see if we can get those numbers up a little bit higher. All right, looks like the numbers are slowing down, so we'll go ahead and close the poll out here. And let's take a look at those results. This is uh, you know kind of kind of nice to see. Um, we we you know we are thanking donors, but no, we should do more. Is is the lead here? So that's that's a great uh, great idea. So you 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 know uh, there's there's more opportunity. So that's good. Um, those of you who uh, you know great. You know that's 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 good for that. The, you can uh, hopefully get a little extra information to make it even better. And for the so-sos and the non-existence, well, guess what? This is a perfect opportunity for you. So wherever you are in your donor thank you strategy, I believe you'll take away some truly helpful tips and ideas for your nonprofit. So let's uh, get back into the presentation here. And um, with that, uh, Join me in welcoming Gail Perry to start us off with creating a killer thank you letter. So over to you, Gail. Terrific. Thank you so much, Scott. And I want to say hello to everybody uh, all over the country and probably the world who are joining us. Uh, the thank you letter is a big bugaboo for a lot of people. And I remember I was just telling our uh, organizers that when I was a frontline fundraiser, I was the head fundraiser for the Keenan Flagler Business School here at Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where I am. Um, but having to rewrite my thank you letters every year was made me pull my hair out. And it just was such a drag. And I never could feel like it was um, fun. And I never felt like I was really being genuine. And I would always revert to this awful stuff called um, uh, on behalf of, which is, which it really, really is just a terrible way to write a letter. So, and so one other point I want to make in terms of introduction is that I have a very active um, blog and website. It's um, gailperry.com and there are tons and tons of posts. I've been posting there every Friday for uh, over 10 years, but the number one um, landing post on my entire site which is full of all sorts of stuff is the killer thank you letter post and the killer thank you letter webinar. So this is one of my favorite topics to do. Um, let's see, I'm trying to move the slide. There you go. Yeah. Um, let's go back though. Just a second. There we go. Is that, no, can you, let's see, I'm sorry. Just give me one second to make sure I'm in the correct slide. Um, uh, but let's talk a little bit about why the thank you is so important. And I love the idea of a thank you strategy rather than just a one shot um, effort. And I want to challenge you with a new concept in fundraising. I'm working on some new vocabulary to teach people or especially board members. I'd like to maybe re, um, replace the word thank you or stewardship, which is what we call now, right? Stewardship. Uh, I would like to replace it with the concept of nurture. So after a donor makes a gift, we go into a nurturing um, framework and we are um, the most important thing about this thank you letter is that it nurtures the donor for the next gift. And so we hands down, it's probably the, um, the most, one of the most important communications, you know, your donor is actually going to receive and it may be getting far less attention than your, um, your, your newsletter or all the fancy communications you send to your donor. They pay more attention to your thank you letter. Whoops. Um, and uh, the whole notion, I quoted some interesting statistics here, which are really interesting, that seven out of 10 people remember the thank you letter better than they remember the appeal. And think about your own life, don't you? I mean, if you have a warm and fuzzy thank you letter, um, it's, it's like, oh my gosh, yay, I feel so good about making this gift. 
And then how about the bottom um, data point? Uh, seven out of 10 people rated their thank you letter as ordinary and predictable. So what does that mean? That means that you have an opportunity to stand out. Uh, everybody's spreading about stuff like donor fatigue and competition and too much noise in the marketplace for donors. Um, I'm not so sure I believe in donor fatigue. I think if you're doing a great job, your donors are not tired, they're thrilled. Um, but you have a chance to stand out by creating a thank you letter that's special and a thank you letter that, that is charming and uh, a letter that they'll remember or even stick on their refrigerator. I want to know, tell you that I got a thank you note that I stuck on my refrigerator because it made me so happy. So that may be the goal. I bet that, let's, that, let's make that our goal for our Giving Tuesday and Year End donors that we're going to create such a powerful letter that is going to delight them so much. It'll be, it'll be a, under on the refrigerator magnet. How about that? Um, here we go. I think I might be moving too quickly on these slides. So yeah, um, let me know, Scott, if I'm moving too quickly. But let's go into a little bit more of the psychology and the research about thank yous that um, we measure. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with the concept of, of surveying your donors to, to measure their donor satisfaction. That's one of the new trends in the past few years that are helping people build up their annual funds. Because if you can figure out um, who your satisfied donors are and who's not satisfied or what they're satisfied about and what they're not satisfied about, you can um, segment your mailings and your outreach to donors in a way that fits their particular issue that's going on with them. So we know that for a fact that if a donor rates themselves as satisfied, they will give more. And so what does it mean to have a satisfied donor? is something to consider as well. Um, one of the, I do a lot of training and teaching um, at conferences and workshops around the country and the world. And uh, one of the um, points that board members are always very interested in is that the, the data from uh, the for-profit industry says that it costs seven times more money to bring in a new customer to a business than it does to renew um, and, and renew an old customer. For example, um, I was just out at the mall and I went into Pottery Barn. Pottery Barn is hitting me in, in multiple channels in my, with, in my mail and with my email. And then there they are in front of me. And so I go into the Pottery Barn store because I'm familiar with the brand. And it's easy for them to renew my visits there. Also, if you, um, the reason when I leased a wonderful Audi, the, um, the Audi people fell all over themselves at customer service because they wanted me to come back and lease another Audi from them. They treated me like a queen. So the reason the for-profit businesses spend so much time on customer service and on current customer communication is because it's cheaper for them to do that with their current customers as opposed to trying to spend the advertising and the outreach um, and marketing to bring in a new customer. And, and people, I don't think we quite have the data for uh, the nonprofit sector, but we're, we feel very comfortable that this, this information, these, these statistics really do correlate to what we're seeing in the nonprofit sector, that it costs a lot of money to find a new donor. So if you look at your thank you letter and your thank you process and your thank you strategy to put it in a very big picture as the nurturing strategy, remember I mentioned that word earlier, then um, you are going to up your donor retention. And we know of course that donor retention is falling and we know that small donors are dropping off. So perhaps now more than ever, the, um, the thank you may be the most important thing you're doing to up your donor retention. How's that for an idea? And remember, we're going to give you some great ideas to do wonderful thank yous. So don't, don't, don't fear, don't fear. Um, and you know, the whole here's here's some more data there about um, more money is spent on nonprofit organizations recruiting a donor. Uh, in fact, you know, I'm sure you're familiar that that acquisition of donors, like a cold mailing to a new group of donors who've never given, you'll usually lose money. Uh, my daughter uh, works for a land trust and I help her on the side, you know, with her fundraising. That's what she does, part of her job. And she um, she created a list of sportsmen or sportswomen, sports people who hunt and fish 
and um, are active, avid outdoors people, and they have come in contact with the land trust, but they have never been asked to give or never given. And so she had high hopes for her list. I did help her with a, with a letter. And, and she was shocked when I told her she would probably lose money on that acquisition mailing. So again, uh, the importance of the thank you. And just this box over here on the right-hand side of the, the screen, you know, we serve, we, we, there's all sorts of, all manner of research about why donors don't give, but um, not acknowledged or thanked for the previous gift is way up there at the top about um, what donors say. And they, they may have gotten a thank you letter, but they don't remember it. And of course, lack of communication about results, that, that's, we're waving that flag strongly these days. Um, let's move on to the other sli next slide. And I wanna, um, I'm giving it time to shift because I don't wanna rush it. Um, try again, excuse me one sec, there we go. Um, uh, I wanna give you some great hint, great hints, some great tips on the five steps to a perfect thank you letter. And, and I love sharing this with people because they everybody walks away with a happy smile when they consider the creative ways that um, you can sharpen your thank you letter and rewrite it and turn it into something quite wonderful. So um, number one, and this is what donor-centered fundraising is all about, is give the donor credit for your work. And this is difficult to do. People, um, you know, they give lip service, oh, we're donor centered, but you're not if you are taking all the credit. And let me give you an example. I know this is it's a hard concept to nail and people can't have a real tough time figuring it out or actually they figure it out, but they can't implement it. And say, for example, in the bullets on the screen, you should not say your gift will help us serve so many people or your gift is going to help the land trust secure um, X number of acres or your gift is going to um, help us mount new productions of art. Your gift is going to help us further the research for disease. Your gift is going to help us um, feed more hungry children. No, 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 no. <laughs> Instead, it's your gift is feeding hungry children. Your gift is going to help save the frogs. Your gift is going to preserve land. Your gift is going to um, uh, help cure disease. So you, you see, all I did was remove, remove the word us, the little tiny pronoun us, away from the sentence. And you, when you put the us in there, you are inserting your organization as a sort of an intermediary or uh, between the donor and the gift. It's not like the donor gives money to your organization and your organization does the work. And I know your board chair and your board members and your CEO, they, wanna, they want that thank you letter to brag about your organization and the good work it does. And no, 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 <laughs> because you're, you're, you're gonna, if you give the donor credit, the donor becomes happier. And the donors say, oh my gosh, you know, I help feed these hungry kids. I love this organization. I want to do this again. Uh, so as, as this is a deep and subtle shift that is probably the most powerful thing you can do in all of your thank you materials. And it also applies to when you do your appeals. You don't say, please give us money so that we're, our goal is to raise $100,000 in Giving Tuesday so that we can blankety, blankety, blank. That's a good strategy. But the goal would really be to raise $100,000 to create a movement of donors who are all committed to doing blankety, blankety, blank, if you can see the difference. I'm going to try to, okay, here we go. Um, I, I, I ran into this, this little image years ago, and I just love the image. I think that if somebody sent this to me, I might cry, you know, and, and we, I want to, I want to emphasize the difference between an on behalf of blotty 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 letter that you might get, which is so dry and so boring and so stale. And instead, look at this little thank you note because it is emotional. And one of the challenges in uh, philanthropy or in fundraising departments and organizations across the world is that many times board members and organizations leader think, is, think you need to be institutional and you need to be formal, you need to be on brand, God help me, don't get me started on that. Um, and instead, 
fundraising has got to create an emotional reaction. You know, there's some some saying somewhere I need to get the exact one is that um, uh, um, emotion leads to action and data leads to conclusions. And so if you ever want to get people activated, you've got to be emotional. If you think about the great orators of the world, the speakers, they are playing on people's emotion, which is the way, I mean, Julius Caesar he, uh, or Brutus or whoever it was that you're, a, I was an English major and I was a fan of Shakespeare, but he got, got everybody rabble roused just by being emotional. Um, so I have another challenge for you. My first challenge today, by the way, is to can your letter make it to the refrigerator, right? And the second one is, can your letter make the donor go, oh, because I, and, and, you, and if you can tell a story or if you can get, deliver a document or a thank you letter or something in words and pictures that make your donor go, oh, you have got it nailed. I mean, that is the measure of success. And sometimes when I um, um, do my workshops, uh, we, we stumble upon somebody's story that makes the entire room go, oh, and, and bingo, they've got it. So that's your second um, goal or assignment or takeaway, I hope, from my section of this report, of this webinar. Um, and I also like, if you're struggling with what to say, why not just tell a story? And remember, one story is better than three stories, right? And I like the way I'm phrasing this, tell a story. I just heard this story, which I wanna share with you. One of our students, blah, 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 blah. You know, make it really feel personal and informal. Um, and, I, and this is a nice way to add um, some richness to a thank you letter, to take it away from the, from the um, institutional ease. Um, but remember, the stories can't, I mean, I see a lot of people send me their letters and I look at them. And the letters, you don't make the story go on and on. You should be able to tell a powerful story in three sentences. And so you have to leave out a lot of detail and maybe three extra paragraphs. But remember, the best thank you letter is a short one, not a long one. Um, so you have to do all this with a short letter. So I'm going to go to the next one. Let's talk a little bit. Oops. Um, hold on. Did I go too fast? Let's see. Um, well, excuse me. Let me get my slides right. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the whole idea of creating an emotional reaction is setting the tone. And, you know, remember, I was an English major again. The tone of the letter is um, the author's attitude toward the reader of the letter. And so you want to set a tone of being informal and like a real person and that you are actually grateful. <laughs> you're, you're friendly and you're excited and you're enthusiastic. And so um, I'm a big fan of having sentences and words and phrases I can give people that they can just steal from. So steal these sentences. I can't begin to thank you enough for, or we're so pleased you chose to renew your support this year. I mean, isn't that nice? We're so pleased you chose to renew your support this year. What a lovely thing to say to somebody. You know, and because of your gift, a family's going to have something, and your gift is going to help improve the lives. I mean, this, these are nice things to say to donors. And they're sweet people. They care about your cause because they gave. So be, be sweet back to them, I think. And here's, um, I'm a real fan of Penelope Burks, the great Canadian researcher from Canada. And I've got a couple of her book, books on my bookshelf behind me. Um, and her very first book, Donor Centered Fundraising, which was really groundbreaking. She, had, she has a chapter on thank you letters that I think is probably the best in the business still. And the, the book is maybe 12 or 13 years old. And this is a sample letter from her book that I have borrowed. Um, with attribution, um, and and look how short this letter is. It's um, you know we're so grateful for your donation, and you notice they say where the gift is going to be used. Okay, so the donation was for something specific, and even if it was a general donation, you tell the donor that we've allocated your donation to something specific, so the donor feels happy, um, and then we're going to report back to you on this program that you're helping to fund. And here's a, a phone number and a name for somebody if you have questions. I don't know. I've seen probably thousands of thank you letters in my career and probably a handful have the contact name of the de development director and a phone number. 
So, and also it's signed from a board member, very important. Not, not um, better not for it to come from the CEO or the fundraising department, but it needs to be signed by a board member. So this is a great thank you letter and it's easy to do, knock it off, you know, absolutely knock it off. So let me make sure I'm gonna um, move my slides quickly enough here. All right, I'm gonna go to slide 13. Let's see if it's gonna work. There's a little bit of lag when I click, and so I'm not sure I can tend to click again. Um, and so let's number three in the five tips for a good thank you letter. Let's assure donors that they made, made a wise investment. Um, this is a very old, very old email thank you letter, but it's still one of the best in the business from, of course, Charity Water. Um, and I particularly am impressed with the infographics um, in different ways, the chart donation amount data any any way to to make the um the email stand out last year you donated to help not help us bring clean water but you donated to make this happen and so we're updating you very very strong letter very short very short and so um we talk about wanting to make sure that the don the donor the donor, if it's the first time gift, the donor says, well, you know, I don't know much about this organization, but I sort of like what they do. And so I'm going to I'm going to make a gift. And so it, it it assures the donor they made a wise investment. OK, so uh, if you can be warm and friendly and informal, yet say specifically how you're going to use the money and you show up as business like um, these are things that give the donor confidence in your organization, helping your donor, helping your organization stand out in the donor's brain. Because if they're animal people, they may be giving to three animal charities. But if you come back and say very specifically how you're going to use it and talk about the impact that the donor's going to make with their money, you're going to have a leg up um, on the other, the other um, solicitations that are coming into the donor's life, either the computer screen, the phone, the mail, or even at an event or face to face since there's so many different media we can use. So um, one other point about this slide that I think is important that people forget is can you acknowledge your donor's past support? You know, if you can say to your donor, you've been giving, you, we value your partnership over the years, that is, that is really powerful because it means that you, the donor is not anonymous. So you want to you want to try to be as customized as you can with every thank you letter that you send out. So let's number four, let's get the details right. You know, let's let's make sure the donor's name is correct. And uh, there's a lot of struggle right now with um, CRMs, donor systems, um, in terms of husband and wife giving. Um, I'm um, I've just actually gotten married, um, yay, last month and uh, about a month ago, and we made our first joint gift. But when I made the gift on the form of the, um, the website, and this was a, a local food bank, we had decided to do this jointly as our first gift together. I couldn't put his name in. Um, and so they can't, they can't thank, make him feel like he's also being thanked. There's a lot of struggle among women donors who are furious at making the gift in their own name and then the, the thank you letter comes back either to Mrs. William Smith or to, um, uh, or were even worse to their husband. So I'm telling you right now, figure this out. It's in the back end of your system and you know, women make more gifts than men, okay? And m women make lar uh, larger gifts than men. So you do not want to tick off your female donors. And if your CRM is set up to have a male bias, you need to fix it fix it now. <laughs> and let, let me just say, no spelling or grammatical errors. And um, let me just also say that a thank you letter never, ever, ever, ever asks for another gift. And I know that's hard for you to think about, but forget it. <laughs> you know, the donor deserves something sweet to them that's not with your hand out. And the donor, if it's sweet, if it brings your donor surprise and delight, that's one of our favorite phrases now in fundraising, then um, you, you're, you're, you remember your, your thank you letter is setting up the next ask. So your thank you letter is part of the nurturing, remember that word again, the nurturing and cultivation process for the next gift to the to the donor. 
So having some sweet thank yous that are not asked are absolutely imperative. Um, if you um, if you want to maintain the donor's happy, warm relationship with you and continue receiving gifts from them, which you do. And there are a few rules here for handwriting. And if you really know the donor well, or if they're an important leadership donor, or they're well known in the community, or if it's a very large gift, I think it's lovely to do a handwritten letter. And here's an example of one right here. I just, uh, this is an example of one uh, group I've worked with I just really, really like. Please know that your gift is making a difference. That's sort of boring. But listen, the, 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 the board member wrote the letter. And um, it, because of your generosity, we are able to continue providing. Well, we could maybe rewrite that and take the we out. Um, but still, the organization gets high points for having the board member craft the letter. Just love that. Love that. Um, and so let's go, go to number five. Uh, and I've been harping on this the whole time I've been talking to you is um, the thank you letter is the first step in the whole nurturing process. And that's why thank you letters are so important. And, and the creative ways that you're going to hear from just a minute um, from our other presenter, the creative ways you can thank your donor. You, you know, it doesn't have to be a letter or maybe you should do a one two punch. Many people ask me, how many, um, do I just do one letter? And I say, and you know, the old saying in fundraising is find seven ways to thank your donors and they'll give again. So you could look at your thank you process and thank you strategy and come up with seven different touches to the donors before you ask again. You know, one could be an impact report. Um, one could be a personal letter from someone who's benefited from the charity's work. They could get a regular printed thank you letter. They could get a handwritten thank you note from somebody at the organization who um, um, knows them. They could get invited to the cookout or the porch party that you have for donors every year to celebrate them. You do not hint, you do not call it a donor appreciation event, okay? You call it um, um, donor, uh, celebrating our donors or something wonderful like that. You could invite them in for a tour. All of these steps are part of the nurturing process that sets up a more generous second, third, or fourth, or fifth gift, and it sets up um, an increased gift, or it sets up a monthly gift, or it sets up a planned a, a gift a plan to leave a state gift in their will. So um, uh, uh, it is the first step. It's wildly important, you know, it should be celebrated, you know, maybe have a pizza party and everybody can write handwritten thank you notes and, 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 and I'll be happy. Uh, I've, I've even suggested to one group, um, you know, thank you phone calls is part of a, um, a process. I want to tell you that uh, one of my coaching group members, it was a hospital foundation, decided to have a thank-a-thon to thank donors. You know, that's an additional touch, seven ways to thank your donors. And uh, they all got in a big room and one of the board members was so embarrassed about calling donors to say thank you. He just didn't really want to do it, but he did it. And then as a result of his phone call, uh, one gentleman who was a donor who was so impressed at receiving a board member thank you, sent in a $10,000 gift um, two weeks later and attribute it to the fun conversation he had had with the board member. So there are many ways to bring your donor's surprise and delight in the thank you process. Again, here's an image that is just makes your heart, stabs you in the heart and makes you realize the reality of what you've done in terms of sharing your resources um, with someone who really needs help. Um, so I've clicked, um, here we go on the slide number 16. Again, let's talk a little bit about how quickly thank you notes should be written. Um, we feel there are many organizations who have a two day turnaround on thank you letters. And the faster you can get the thank you letter out, look, this is important. It impresses the donor and the donor thinks that you're efficient and well run. And so the whole, it's, it, it's just really interesting to think about what's the donor's opinion of us. If we can turn around a thank you letter, would say within the week, and it's warm and wonderful. Um, the, because remember, donors um, are not sure they trust nonprofits. You know, overall trust in institutions, including nonprofits, is declining and continues to decline. So building up trust and credibility 
um, in your donor's brain when it comes to your organization is absolutely key. Um, and so uh, there are a lot of reasons to be prompt. You know, I have gotten thank you letters for gifts and I couldn't remember making the gift. But if I get a thank you letter, um, I, I gave, I have a friend who's running for North Carolina Senate and I up and made a gift on his website. Um, you know, I never heard, never got a personal solicitation from him or anything. I just made one of these anonymous gifts because I thought it was important. And yesterday, I got the formal thank you letter from his campaign and he wrote a note at the bottom, hope you're doing well now that you've moved to Chapel Hill. Um, and so it's that bottom, that little no handwritten note at the bottom of the letter is also uh, something that can, it can make the donor feel closer and it's going to impact the donors, as Penelope Burt says on this slide, future giving decisions. So two huge huge points on this slide is that the FAST letter tells the donor that your, your that y'all are y'all are well run and efficient and credible and the donor can trust you and it also influences the future gift decisions as that we've been saying all along. So, let me go. so if if you um if you my takeaways please are that this letter that you're sweating in your office scratching your head how can i be genuine um how can i be grateful where i got where can i add emotion what story can i add this letter is so so important because it's the first step to the nurturing process to up your retention make your donors stick with you over the long run and you know what that yields that creates the the gold kahuna the pot of gold that every nonprofit wants Nonprofits want a, a sustainable base of supporters that will new, renew their gift every year because that's your consistent cash flow. So the thank you letters part of that is the first step in creating a sustainable donor base. Hooray. Cash flow you can count on and plan for long-term growth. So um, Scott, I want to turn it back over to you. I want to thank everybody. I want to invite you to go to gailperry.com and if you like my tone and attitude <laughs> and ideas, I have a Friday newsletter that goes out very cheerfully on Fridays and I'd love to stay in touch with you. I thank you, Gail, for all these, the, just the wonderful insights and, and really the, the, the touching personal examples into creating that, that perfect thank you letter. Now, as a quick reminder uh, to our audience, if you have any questions, you can submit them into the question box on your control panel as we go along. We're answering some. We've got some real good ones uh, that we, we're saving for our Q&A. Uh, so, but now let's, uh, let's turn this over to uh, Lindsay Hempel from MobileCause for some, uh, one sec here, get that there. Okay, so for some uh, creative and engaging ways to say thank you to your donors. So, okay, Lindsay, floor is yours. Great, thanks, Scott, and hello, everyone. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, as Gil has shared with us, thanking your donors is just so, so important. Um, as she was uh, talking through all of her examples, I'm looking here at my desk, I actually have three thank you notes propped up, and uh, they really do help to make your donor feel warm and fuzzy and appreciated. So today I'd like to just share five different creative ways that your organization can be thanking and acknowledging your donors. Um, so let's dive in. So one of the first, after a donor gives, they usually come to some type of thank you and confirmation page. So this is usually one of the first touch points that you have and really the first opportunity you have to begin your thank you process. Uh, sometimes this touch point's underutilized, uh, but really the confirmation page should be more than just uh, your card has been billed. <laughs> this page should be thanking and acknowledging the gift itself. It can be used to uh, demonstrate impact to the donor um, that the donor is having, if it's possible, detail out exactly how that um, impact may, what that impact may be by adding some copy in here. Uh, and even a short thank you video can go a long way, even if it's a 30 second uh, thank you message from your executive director, founder, or even a board member, um, or 
potentially your beneficiaries themselves, um, you can really utilize this space to begin demonstrating to the donor their impact immediately. So you'll see an example over here on the right hand side utilizing the space for um, some video as well as allowing individuals to stay connected um, and really continue that thank you process from here. Uh, another important kind of first step is uh, that tax receipt. So while the tax receipt does need to be a little bit more technical and have all of the information for the donor to use for tax related purposes, this can still include a nice thank you message and continue that cultivation and begin that nurturing um, that Gail was sharing with us earlier. Uh, but thanking your donors doesn't have to end there. That's really only the beginning. So taking a look at one of our first uh, ways that we can begin to thank donors is uh, social media. So social media really has become such an important channel that inspires giving. You'll see from the stats here, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter are kind of taking the lead on channels that inspire the most giving, but YouTube and LinkedIn, LinkedIn um, have some uh, significant influence there. Um, and you will likely have been using these channels to motivate the gift initially. So you want to continue that line of communication through all of the channels that you've used to promote your campaign. Now, social media is a is fun and unique because it creates the opportunity for further engagement. For example, uh, you can tag your donors in social media thank you posts. Um, you can ask for their permission if you'd like. Some organizations I've seen have included a checkbox on their actual donation form uh, that say, yes, I don't mind being acknowledged for my gift or um, give me a shout out, <laughs> whatever it may be. So you can tag these donors through these channels um, which first will obviously make the donor feel personally acknowledged by specifically shouting them out, um, but also will help to boost the engagement through social media. Because the post is tagged, all the friends of the person who would see the thank you, um, so that message would get even further by allowing other people to see uh, that specific post. And ideally this will help to start some type of dialogue with your followers. Um, Including videos and images as well can help boost your visibility through most social media algorithms too. So another idea is to throw in some fun, creative, thank you graphics or videos as part of social media too. Now, uh, a couple other ideas for your thank you post. Um, have an executive director or staff member thank donors on Facebook Live or Instagram Stories. Um, social media these days have so many tools that are available for you to use. And um, hopping on a Facebook Live or creating an Instagram Story gives um, your organization the ability to directly and personally connect with your uh, donors and your supporters and followers uh, virtually. So really fun idea there. Um, another idea is to show results and demonstrate the impact of donor support. So again, detailing out any uh, tangible evidence of how a campaign or a donor's gift has made an impact um, by sharing that out on social media. Uh, another idea is to create custom gratitude posts for each donor. So here on the right, we have an example of um, an organization that used pictures to thank their donors. Uh, so you'll see a few nonprofit volunteers, very hard at work here. Uh, the top right is actually my favorite picture with uh, the dog, the cat, and a turtle there. <laughs> so what this organization has done is taken the names of the donors who participated in their giving day and written a note to each one of them, a handwritten note and taken a picture and uh, posted that to Facebook. So as the campaign was going along, they were making these gratitude posts um, for all of the donors that participated within the campaign. Now, while all of us might not have uh, cute animals at our disposal for something like this, um, these gratitude posts can be really simple, but yet still have a huge effect uh, and, make, and to help make those donors feel warm and fuzzy. 
Uh, I've seen other organizations record a short video listing the names of donors as a thank you, that kind of personal shout out again. So you'll notice it doesn't need to be anything extravagant or fancy, but something as simple as a photo like this with a thank you message can um, really go a long way to making a donor feel appreciated. All right, another creative um, way to thank your donors is to incorporate video. So video is a great way to increase visibility uh, to your audience generally. Videos posted on social media generate 1200% more shares than text and images combined. So a great way to just get your message out there. And you can create short videos to acknowledge your donors. Um, they can be, again, short in the moment. And like I was mentioning on the other slide, uh, one of the great things about video is that it doesn't need to be um, super produced or anything too extravagant or fancy. The most important thing is that it's heartfelt and sincere and that your um, donors really get the idea, the idea of uh, your gratitude. Um, Gail was talking about it a little bit earlier too, um, informal. It, it, it works in a way that allows people to feel personally connected to your organization. So most social media platform algorithms favor videos. So by posting them, you will be helping to boost your visibility too. Um, and you can also use these videos within a confirmation page, like the example that we are looking at earlier. Um, so I had an organization do, it was a, a school that I was working with and they ran a successful campaign. So what they did was they got all the kids out on the football field and they recorded um, them all saying thank you. So really simple, not too hard um, to get all the kids together um, and record the video, but there's something about 400 kids saying thank you <laughs> that was really, really effective. So you can consider adding some type of short video uh, to your confirmation pages as well. Um, some other ideas for video, uh, showcase your organization's programs in action. So this can be featuring behind the scenes moments uh, so that your donors are more familiar with what you do. Let them be a part of the action virtually so they can see what your organization is doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, another idea is interview a beneficiary. So Beneficiaries really are the direct proof of the success of your organization. So by allowing them to tell their personal stories, you can build a more personal connection with your donors there. Uh, another idea, host a Facebook Live at your office or at a donor event. So if you're already doing some type of donor event or uh, something uh, fun or representative of what your organization does uh, in the office, consider streaming it. So it'll not only help to boost the visibility, but allow more people to participate. All right. Uh, one of the uh, other ways that you can uh, thank your donors is to make them the star, let your supporters shine. So feature them as a focal point in your storytelling by spotlighting them. And as always, make sure you're doing this across all of your normal communication channels. So direct mail, email, and especially social media. Spotlighting, spotlighting your donors is a great way to make them feel special. Uh, and help reinforce a sense of community there uh, with your supporters. And don't forget, <laughs> tag whenever possible, just to help boost your visibility there. And some ideas for donor spotlights could be to conduct a video interview and embed it on a blog or a website. So highlighting individuals this way just allows the donor to identify and relate to other donors and uh, potentially uh, recruit some new donors from there. Uh, similarly, you can create dedicated donor spotlight emails uh, and social media posts to be sharing out. And always let the donor tell why they chose to do your, donate to your organization. So make them the focal point and uh, encourage them to, to share their story. Great. Another way that um, you can be thanking your donors is to create special touches and celebrate your donors. Um, there's a 
few ideas here. So one of the first ones would be through giving anniversaries. Um, thank your donors in a meaningful way on their one year giving anniversary, or this could be even sooner, sending donors a happy anniversary card at a six month mark. Um, don't forget, utilize all those channels. So email, social media, text, um, and you can, better yet, get more personal with these thank yous with a written thank you message or a direct phone call. So um, we've learned, so we've learned that a thank you note can go a really long way. Everything is digital nowadays, so taking that extra time to write that thank you note or pick up the phone and make a call can really mean a lot for a donor. So, so by celebrating these giving anniversaries, you can help yourself create touch points to convey gratitude to, donor, to donors all year long. Um, and so by celebrating these milestones, your organization has that time and place to circle back around to your donor throughout the year. So if you can, um, and your donor database allows you or your giving software, uh, set that up to automatically remind you when those anniversaries are coming up so that you have something in place that's easily telling you, hey, <laughs> it's time to thank your donors <laughs> and um, make that as easy as possible for your organization, but keeping in touch with your donors all year round. Um, another, a few other idea, well, another idea would be to run a thankathon. So you can uh, utilize your board and volunteers to make phone calls and thank you donors. Um, and thank you to donors. I loved uh, Gil's um, anecdote there earlier where uh, that um, uh, donor decided to give an extra $10,000 gift. So um, this could be a really great way to make that um, personal touch to those who've supported your organization. It could be a one night thing, a week long event, just depending on how many donors you have. Colors can come to the office or you can make it a virtual gathering if that's not possible um, and call donors not only to thank them, but to update them on the recent progress in a campaign or any recent success stories. Um, so, Thankathons are great because so much of what we are talking about is um, digital <laughs> nowadays, the way we communicate, so a personal phone call uh, can really go a long way. All right, uh, last but not least, what better way to celebrate your donors than to throw them a party? <laughs> well, um, so there's a few ways you can thank your donors in person. Uh, you can consider creating special donor events like a dinner, a tea, or a happy hour to um, celebrate your donor. Another idea would be to add a special donors only get together to an existing event, whether that's like a VIP, um, VIP cocktail hour before a gala or some type of special um, area at a 5K. That way you're still celebrating them and rewarding them um, and celebrating that, that success, but still making them feel special with this kind of VIP um, special donors only area. So uh, that also is helpful because you don't necessarily have to create an entirely new and separate event, but you can still use an existing event to uh, make your donors feel special. Um, another idea, would be to um, invite your donors to participate. Sorry, jumped ahead there. Invite your donors to participate one-on-one -on -one, um, with your programs, whether that's something like feeding the homeless, building houses, reading to children. Involve your donors uh, with what you're doing day to day, if possible. Uh, this is great because it gives the donor an even better view of what you're doing and how they can help beyond a financial gift. So obviously thankful for the financial gift, but maybe the donor wants to be more engaged and become a volunteer. So invite them to different opportunities that they have to continue making a difference and engaging with your organization. If possible, try to intersperse these events throughout the year as a way of sharing thanks and reconnecting to help uh, keep that relationship with your donors um, all year long. Uh, and as uh, Gail mentioned earlier, it's expensive to get new donors. So by involving your current supporters um, in these different ways, it could ultimately pay off in the end, ideally for that retention rate 
um, and encouraging people to participate beyond their one-time gift with either a recurring or larger or even getting a new volunteer. Well, as Scott mentioned earlier, I work here as a uh, work here at MobileCause as a digital fundraising strategist. And every day, I work with lots of organizations with many different types of campaigns. Uh, but no matter what type of campaign I'm working on, there's always one thing I highly recommend to my clients, and that's great stewardship. So um, I work with clients to not only help build their donation pages and campaign strategy, but also to help build their thank you strategy. That can include crafting copy for confirmation pages and thank you letters, as well as working with organizations to develop social media posts, emails, and mobile text messages to send over time that helps celebrate their donors um, and really keep that line of communication open. So our team is here to help you um, work on different components of your campaign. Uh, and honestly, stewardship is one of my favorite parts of the campaign. It's something I think a lot of organizations can always do more of, and it's so fun to be able to celebrate the successes of your organization and highlight the many individuals who help you reach those successes. So especially as you're approaching Giving Tuesday and year end coming up in the next few weeks, uh, don't forget to keep these tips in mind um, and think about which ways you'll want to thank your supporters as you're beginning to reach your fundraising goals. And with that, I'm gonna pass things back to Scott. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank you both to uh, Gail and to Lindsay for sharing your just valuable expertise with us today. Now, we hope everyone here is inspired to test out these ideas for saying thank you, whether it's this during this giving season or uh, well beyond, so you can inspire more, inspire more uh, recurring donations and, and con continue to grow your mission. Now, before we jump ahead into the uh, Q&A, we want to ask just a real quick question just to see, uh, wake you up a little bit here, and also just, hey, let, let us know, did you uh, like what you hear? Uh, and so, got the poll here. It is uh, it is a multiple select, so if you like both, you know, feel free to put check marks in both. And uh, yeah, so we get that in place. And uh, let that go for just a few seconds here. All right. Oh, great. A lot of great information. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for this here. All right. So we'll go ahead and close that. So we want to get over to the Q&A. So uh, with that, so our first question is uh, for Gail. Let me find it here. Okay. So Gail, um, if a donor gives an additional gift within one year, how do you make sure you don't send them the same letter? We have template letters based on the annual campaign year, and currently they get the same letter in the same year. Well, clearly you need to personalize those letters and you should not send the same one. So your template is not carrying out the true objective it needs to accomplish. I mean, yeah, it's making things more systematized, but it's not, um, oh, it, it doesn't, it ranks pretty low in the, in the donor centered thank you process. I mean, if you, if you, if you don't want to send the second identical letter, maybe the, the, if a donor gives a second get let second gift in a year, send them a handwritten letter or have them be phone called to be thanked. Or, you know, there are all sorts of different ways. We talked, touched on lots of different ways to thank donors. So you gotta have a different one. Sorry. All right, thanks. All right, so the next question is, uh, uh, I like the way this one's worded here. How do you create an emotional reaction when you're an environmental nonprofit for human service rather than protecting fuzzy puppies? Oh gosh, you sent me that to me earlier and I've been brainstorming on all the different ways. I'm an environmental nonprofit. My, remember my daughter uh, works for the land trust. A picture of a frog. I mean, frankly, I think a beautiful framed, if you want to focus on the environmental issue, a beautiful framed picture of a landscape uh, that that's in your service area or people, uh, if you're human service, um, pe you know, people, people like pictures of people but there are rules for that. You need to have close-ups of people and you need to have bright colors and they need, there shouldn't be a whole lot of detail. Uh, but it might be fun for you to gather, gather your staff around and brainstorm happy images and happy ways to thank. Uh, because I'm thrilled to be able to save beautiful landscapes and I'm thrilled to help uh, disadvantaged people or people who have um, who, who we're trying to help be involved in the environment so there should be lots of pictures available of happy people with their faces 
and um, you know, even hugging a tree if that fits with your with your work. Great question. I get this question all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gail. All right, so uh, next question here, uh, just uh, one last one here before we uh, wrap up, we have for Lindsay. Uh, are there any uh, privacy issues when thanking donors via social media? Yeah, great question. Um, so one of the last things you, you want to do is uh, make your donors upset if they've given you a gift. So when possible, you do want to try to um, get their permission to give them a shout out on social media. And you can achieve this by adding a simple field on any one of your donation forms to say, can we acknowledge you on Facebook or social media? You can even add a, an extra field to have them include their handles and their Instagram username. So you actually, so they are indicating, yes, my profile is uh, shareable and I'm taggable. Um, so when possible, it would be a best practice to do this. Um, if for any reason you they opt out or you don't get this information, you can still thank them uh, by first name and not tagging them on social media. To have that little shout out is still good. Um, so a couple of ways that you can address that. Okay, great. So uh, in continuing with donor gratitude, uh, next week, MobileCause will be sending an email with some thank you templates. Now, these digital templates are pre-crafted and easily customizable thank yous for emails, letters, social media, and text messages. So keep an eye out for the thank you templates next week. Now, if you're interested in uh, discovering how MobileCause can help maximize your fundraising efforts so you can raise more with less time and effort, please fill out our post-webinar survey survey or visit www.mobilecause.com and uh, so that's all we have for today but I do uh, we do have we did mention that uh, gift card so we um, uh, randomly selected from the attendees and our winner is uh, look it up here Douglas Dunn is the winner so we'll get in touch with you uh, shortly on that and uh, so congratulations and so with that uh, that's what we have for today if you have questions that were not answered you can email marketing at mobilecause.com and thanks to all of you for participating in today's webinar and and best of luck in all your fundraising efforts we really look forward to seeing you again for our next month at our webinar on last minute year-end giving so have a wonderful day everyone thanks you so much and bye-bye